So for question one, we're given we're given this variable module. So, whenever we get a Verilog module, or we have to write a Verilog module, the number one thing that no one should ever get wrong because it's so easy is the inputs and outputs, right? Um, so, if I'm given a module uh, declaration, So it's a bit of buggy code, but I'm hoping you'll understand what's going on. Um, right, so the first thing this tells us is that we have this module where the inputs are A, B, and then we have three bits of C. Yeah, so bits 2, 1, and 0, right? And our outputs, we have X, and then we have two bits of Y, 1 and 0. Um, and then we're given uh, we're given a bunch of statements which instantiate gates and connect things up. So remember that for gate level instantiation, the first argument in the list is the gate output. Yeah. So we're told that there is a gate called G1 that connects A and C2 through an AND gate and produces a signal called. W1, yeah? That should be pretty obvious. <coughs> and we also have a NOT gate uh, which produces NC from C0, okay? And we have an XOR gate that takes C1 and B and produces W2. So C1 and B going to an XOR gate and produce W2. Okay, so remember the outputs are always coming first when we instantiate gates. <clears throat> and then we have a NOR gate that, pr that produces PY and takes W1, W2, and NC. So these are these three signals. And this produces PY. <coughs> and then we're told we have, we have an always at positive clock. So what does that create? Flip-flop. A register. Yeah? So we have a flip-flop that takes PY and produces Y. OK? <coughs> um, so now, OK, what does Y, what happens to X? Well, X hasn't been assigned. Yeah. Now, if you do this in using the, the tools, any signal that's not assigned is just thrown away. You know, in synthesis, you get a warning saying signal is not thrown away. This is a bit of a trick. Maybe it's too hard, but you remember we said something about if I say, if I have a three-bit signal Y and I assign, what happens if it's a three-bit signal? Zero, zero, one. So this output of this flip-flop, where will it go? The output of the flip-flop will go to bit zero, right? And so what will happen to bit one? The same as what happened to bit x? You get thrown away. Yeah? So, so if, I, if I assign, if I have a four-bit signal, yeah? x, it's been declared as three to zero. Uh, 
reg, yeah? And then I say x is, let's say y is something else, let's say reg uh, uh, 1, 0, y equals 2b11. Okay, so there's a signal called y that's 2 bits wide, which has a value of 1, 1. And I then say x is y. What happens? Because this is 4 bits and that's 2 bits, right? So what, what I will end up getting on x will be 0, 0, 1, 1, because it will just pad zeros at the top. Yeah? So if I assign a narrow signal to a wide signal, then it just gets zeros padded at the top. Yeah? So the assignment, the smaller signal, will just be right aligned inside that signal. Okay? Now the, the thing that the synthesis tools will do will throw away anything that has not been assigned to it. It will complain, it will tell you the signal has not been assigned to it, but it will throw it away. Okay, so we end up with just this single output. Okay? But this draw let's ignore this thing for now, but you should be able to at least do this. Yeah? <laughs> of course there's one more input missing, right? Can anyone tell me that there's one more bug in this module, right? Uh, there's no battery shop the wire. Okay, well we did mention in the first year that if it's a one bit signal that you're only using to connect things together, then you don't need to be that. You don't have to. I mean it's good form to do that, right? So I would do that. But what else is missing? What's happening here? Yeah. Yeah? So any 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 module that has a uh, a register or flip flop should also have a clock and reset. That we can't put this here, we have to put this here, right? Because input C is 3 bits, so if you want to declare clock and reset, we can do it here, or we can just write the word input here. So we need a clock and reset yeah. input as well. <coughs> okay, but wiring up gates, instantiating gates, instantiating another module should be things that are second nature. Right? Okay, any questions? Something was still looking at. Yeah, so if I ever assign a narrow signal to a wide signal, all the top bits will be zero, except for the width of this, the narrow signal. Yeah. Okay, so in the next question I give you a bit of a clue. I tell you draw a set of cascaded flip-flops. You should know by looking at the code that it's a set of cascaded flip-flops. Okay? Uh, I'm missing I'm missing an end to begin end, right? On the else part. It should be a begin end because I won't put this in Um but we have a small section of code, always at buzz edge clock, if reset then everything, these one bit signals go to zero, otherwise some assignments happen. And I give you the clue by telling you that it's a cascaded, set of cascaded flip-flops to implement a shift register. So, you remember what a shift register looks like, yeah? It's just a set of flip-flops. Okay, and all of them are clocked the same clock and the output of each connects to the input of the next. Yeah? So every cycle what happens? Yeah, there should have, yeah, there's, there's, I mean we, we don't normally draw even the clock, we don't normally draw it, right? we just, we just draw the block with the triangle. So the reset of course is also, you can draw it like this if you want. Okay, so what it is is a set of flip-flops connected, the input of one to the output of the next and so on. And then you're given a piece of code, so let me just write it properly so you can all... I'll, I'll update the question paper. Just leave this because that's the same. So this should be end, else, begin.
Okay, so this is the, the this is what was missing. Yeah, and we get now. Okay, so uh, so what what happens? So can anyone tell me what happens? What's the key thing that we need to remember to understand this physically? It's always at positive clock, right? And we're using what type of assignment? Non-blocking assignment, which means what? Other. Yeah, the order of these statements doesn't make a difference. So if I jumble them up, right? If I jumble up the order of these statements, it doesn't make a difference. Why? Because each one of these, if I get, if I have x, y in inside a always at positive clock, that tells me one thing and one thing only that I have a flip flop where the output is x and the input is y. Right? So each line here is giving me the output and input signal to a flip flop. So how would I then work out what, where this goes here? Why? Just because it's called SRH? Because it's the only one that what? Yeah? Only appears on the right. Yeah? So it, it's never assigned to. Yeah, so we can assume that that's our input. Alternatively, what else could we do to try and, before we draw or write anything up here, we can try and shuffle this around, right? So how would we shuffle it around? So, so yeah, we can say we can say SRM should be first assigned to L then. Yeah. Yeah. Then. Yeah? Now this order is just for me to read. It doesn't make a difference, right? The code does the same thing, but maybe to make me read it, it's easier. So then what do we have? We have SR in. Then? L. L. Yeah? Okay, so... So the key thing to remember when we're working with an always at positive clock and we're using non-blocking assignments is that actually the order that we write the code in means nothing, right? What matters is the flow of data, right? So if I say um, in D1 takes in and then in D4 takes in 3, in D3, and in D3 takes in D2, and in D2 takes in D1, right? It's not a very readable order, but it means exactly the same thing as writing it in the order that makes sense. That in D1's taking one, in D2's taking one, and creating a shift register like this, a delay line, okay? So the only way to work out which signal is which is to read through these statements and look at the correspondence, right? Now this is easy because it's one path, right? But if I have multiple paths, then I have to be clever. Uh, you'll, do, you'll play around with this in your fourth lab. So you'll, you'll be building a pipeline to do some image processing and you'll see, you'll see uh, this in effect because we'll try and count the pipeline stages in our design. And to do that, we have to go through and say, okay, this one comes from where, this one comes from where, and count how many stages we can see. Okay? But that's the solution for this, this, uh, to this question. Question 3A should be easy, right? Let's copy it off the slide and like and the C that one C E one double five not same thing. Up down counter. Um, but you should be able to do this off the cuff. I think it was in the exam. 
So a Verilog module that implements a three-bit up-down counter. Um, so that first part is easy, right? So the first thing we need a module. Now what can we call it? Can we call it three-bit counter? Why? Ah, good. Okay. So we can't start with a number, so we'll call it count three B. Yeah. And what ports do we need for a counter? Well, yeah, it's a synchronous thing, so we always need. Uh, Clock and reset. Yeah, and if it's an up down counter, it means we can select to count up or down. So we need some input to tell us when to count up or down. It can be down, it can be up. It's up to you. Or down to you. Um, okay, and then as a counter, does it have an output? Which is what? Yeah, so. Output. So we'll just call this count. Okay? Reg. Why is it reg? Alright, let's say someone sticks you, someone holds a gun to your head and says, write me a 3-bit Verilog counter module where I'm going to blast your brains out. And you write, you write, and he says, you're not allowed to rub anything out. And you write, uh, and then you write without a reg. How can you fix it? How could you do that? You reg it though. You could? Uh, after the statement, you reg it. Reg it down here? Yeah. Okay, that's a cheat because that's like more like, that's Verilog 95. Yeah. Okay, that's one way. All right. But let's say you have to assign to it as a non reg But it's fine. You can't assign to it to okay, you assign assign what? Assign the output to to the call. Okay, so what you can do is you can create a reg inside, right? A new reg called something like pre count or something. Write your block based on that reg, assign to that and just have assign assign count is pre count. Yeah? Correct? Right? Yeah, so if, you're, if that, you're ever in that situation, I know some of you are special forces and stuff. <laughs> These things happen. Yeah, so Verilog will save your life. Okay? But here we've got reg, so we're okay. <clears throat> if you don't have reg, you can always do your reg inside, and then just use the unassigned statement to assign. There's also one which is actually, you can actually Redeclare it as a reg inside using Verilog 95. We don't do need a three-bit input. Do we need a three-bit input? Why? Because if you call that you would copy the reg because uh, not necessarily. You if you wanted to load you need a three-bit input. Yeah. But the point with, with adding and subtracting with two complement is you just loop around, right? So if you add, if you subtract one from zero then you will just loop around. If you want to be clever, let me show you what you can do if you want to be clever. So we've got always at positive clock. Right, so what's the first thing we have in here? If, if reset, yeah? Yeah? Now, if we reset, what do we reset to? Okay, but what if we want to be clever? What could we do being clever? When we reset, we could look at down, right? And decide whether to reset to zero or reset, reset to one or one. Yeah? If you want to be clever. <laughs> you don't need to do that. You've not been asked to do that. Okay, so if reset, we'll just do count is, uh, okay? Yeah, we're not going to do the clever thing. Okay, so what happens else? Okay, so we check down. If down, then what do we do? Minus. 
count how much? Count is count minus one. Plus plus. And then I can end this now. Someone tell me why this will work, but it's still ambiguous. Because you, the L should have a B. Yeah. Uh, and because it's consistent for statements. Okay, so each one is, this is actually valid. So this is one statement. And this is one statement, right? And if else is a single statement. Now, but the problem is, the reason it's ambiguous is you might wonder, does this else belong to this? Or belong to, I mean, this already has an else. So in this case, it's OK. But also, the rule is the same rule as in C, which is any else is always paired with the last level of hierarchy, which doesn't have an else. Okay. So if you want to be good at writing code, then you could put a begin and begin uh, end like this, and that's sufficient. But if you want to be super <coughs> obvious, you can also do that here, but there's no, no, no need. Okay? But there's no need for this, but I'm just making it. If you ever get a bug and you wonder what's going on, my else isn't working, check your misses. If you've left an else that you thought was paired with one if, but actually it's paired with a different if because it, maybe it was supposed to be with this if, but you left it. So to read up the rules on pairing of else, if and else, you see. Okay, so that's our count term. Okay, now top level module. So what does that mean? What's a top level module? You mentioned this in the course in the lecture last week. What are we doing with what, when we do modules and sub modules and top level? What are we trying to do? Yeah, decompose and hierarchicalize. Uh, Design, right? Great hierarchy. Why is that important? Because it has a simpler block. Yeah, exactly. We test smaller blocks, check that they work before we put them together, and then if we find errors, it's easier to find in the simpler blocks than in the combined modules. Okay? Right, so now we're going to implement a top level module. So this is a piece of code finished. And module. So we're going to declare a module called top mod. Okay, and then we're told that it will instantiate. It will instantiate our account, and then it will instantiate this check it circuit. So can anyone guess how these are going to be connected? Should be pretty obvious. If it's instantiating count, then we definitely need a clock and reset. Yeah? Yeah? And what does it look like check it does? What's check its input? A three bit number, which is probably the output of count. Yeah? And it produces a single bit output, right? <clears throat> so the only thing missing that we need, we still need our down input. Yeah? Because our counter has to get that from somewhere. If in the question you were told you can hardwire it, then you can hardwire it, which means we don't need it in the top level. Right? So let's draw a picture first before we do the circuit. So we're basically going to we're basically going to create a circuit that clock reset down. So this is our counter, and this is our check it. And this is our three bit signal, and this produces a one bit signal. Yeah? Yeah, so we're going to instantiate the counter, instantiate the other module, and then connect the output of counter to check it. Yeah? And the output of check it is going to be the output of this module. Okay? So our inputs clock reset and down to control the counter, and then we have a single output. We'll call we'll call it the same thing as well, let's call it something else. Um, 
was called it is it okay so do we need to declare anything before we instantiate wire yeah how big is the wire okay so what is the wire for to collect to connect the modules so we'll declare a three bit wire <coughs> what should we call it anything right let's call it Valve. Right, now we want to instantiate our modules, okay? So our first module, the counter, is called count3b. That's the module name, yeah? So the first thing we use is the module name, and then we give it an instance name. What is the instance name? It's just a label for that instance of the module, okay? So it can be anything. You can use count1 or even just M1 or anything, right? Any label that you can then use when you simulate the design to work out which, if I have five, six counters in there and they're all called counter, then I don't know which one is the one that's not doing this right. Okay. <clears throat> then I need, to uh, I need to connect the module up, okay? So what are the ports of count? So let's write those down first. So there's clock, reset, down. Um, count. Okay, so that's the structure for instantiating a design. We, we, we put this piece of code down and then we now have to fill in the brackets. The brackets are the signals in this module, i.e. in this module top one, that will connect to these ports of the count block. Yeah. <clears throat> so these are the labels that we get from count 3B. Now these are the names of the ports. Now we need to indicate which signal in top mod to connect to each of these ports. Okay, so clock of module count 3B will be connected to the clock input of this module, which is also called clock. It doesn't need to be the same name. Yeah? But what I'm saying is that the clock of count 3B is connected to a signal called clock in here. Yeah? The same for reset. The same for down. Yeah? It happens to have the same name. Now the output of count is connected to our 3-bit wire, which is called what? Yeah? CNT VAT. Yeah? Yeah? So whenever we instantiate a module, we list out the ports of that module using the dot and the name of the port in that module's declaration. That's that port's interface. That's that module's interface, right? And then in brackets, we write down the name of the signal in the module I am in that is supposed to connect to that port. Now often, for signals like clock and reset, it's the same name anyway, right? But it doesn't need to be. It could be any other name, as long as it's a valid signal in this module. Right, then we need to instantiate the other module, which is called Check It. And we'll just call that M2. And that has two inputs, right, which are what? Um, from its declaration, we have num in. Yeah, and we have divs. Okay, so looking at this, what are we going to connect num into? The output of the counter, which is on which signal? Which is connected to CNT valve. Okay, and div s is the single output of this whole module, which is called what? Is it? Okay, and that's it. Now we can end module. Yeah? So what we have now is, let's draw this just to be a bit clearer. We have
Yeah, so that's what we have now. Yeah, so we have a top level module using these names, connecting these modules to those signals. Okay, any questions? Can everyone do instantiation without any problem now? Should be, right? Okay, now draw a timing diagram showing how your counter output changes, assuming it's set to count down. So, Turn your page on its side and use the, the lines as your plot edges. I still have people going, <sighs> ran out of time. I was like, yeah, you don't need to spend ages drawing the time lines, right? Just use the, use the lines on the page, turn them on its side, use those as the ticks. Okay, so we have our rising edges. Now, I haven't told you what happens to reset, but we can, the normally the safest thing is to assume that reset is asserted at the first clock cycle for that one clock cycle, right? If you don't do that, you want to lose marks, right? But normally we assert reset right at the beginning, right? So our count output will also assume that down is zero, yeah? Oh, no, down is one. Okay, so at the first rising edge, Reset is asserted, so our counter will take what value? Zero. So what's going to happen at the next edge? Reset is not asserted anymore. Seven, yeah? Seven, then? Six, five, four. Three, two, one, then, zero, then, yeah, so the counter just keeps going, right? unless it's a saturating counter, which we'll see in the lab next, this week or next week, okay, so that's like what our counter does, yeah, now, So we have our counter output, what about this, the output of our circuit? Right, so we've got this module called, is it, is it, no, check it. Right, so you can see that it uses some sort of Boolean, yeah, some sort of bind, uh, Boolean equation, yeah, on the tutorial sheet. And that depends on the bits of num in. So let's list the bits of num in just so it's easier. So we have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 0, 1. Yeah? So that's our sequence, that's our count sequence, yeah? In bits. So how does divs? So that's the, the, what we've got so far is the output of our counter in three bits. What about the output of div s? We've got the module here, so how can we work it out? Okay, so let's do, is it? Then, so zero, 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 does that give us a one? Is it? Yeah, it does. One, one, one? No. One one zero. One zero one. One zero zero. Zero one one. Zero one zero. Zero zero one. Yeah. 
So it will reduce the functionality of that circuit. Do you know what it does based on that? What is its function? It takes an input, produces an output. Its output is high at 0, 6, 3. Is it divisible by 3? Yeah? 0 is defined as divisible by everything, right? Okay, so is it, the, the slot, is it, it's called check it. Is, the output of check it is high whenever its input is divisible by 3. Okay? But the key thing, again, Back to exams, whenever you have a timing diagram question, step by step, one signal at a time, do, your, do one signal, do the next signal, and keep doing the signals that you need to do, but one by one. Don't try and do everything in one go. Yeah, because you get people who, who you can see they've, they've got X and Y and Z, and they've done this, and they've done this, and they've done this, and then they've crossed this out. No, just do one signal at a time. And then once you've got that, then you can do this easily, right? And then if you can't answer the fast, last piece of question, you might lose too much. But if you sit there going, what do you do before you even do anything? Okay. Any questions? No questions. Everyone's ready for quiz next week. No questions. <laughs> To understand how to get the DIDS AF model. How to get the big bag. Okay, so that's like a, that's a sum of products, right? Oh, awesome. Expression, yeah. correct? So sum of products expression means that if any of these conditions is true, then the output is true. Yeah. Right? So either this is a not, right? So mm -hmm. not, not, not means zero, zero, zero. Not uh, true, 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 true. So zero, one, one. True, true. One, one, zero. Oh, one, one. Yeah? Okay, last things uh, for today's lecture. Uh, and this is something that we've got a bit more of in the exams recently, even 1005, we've had a couple of understanding questions, right? Because it's surprising some of the crazy stuff that gets written, right? It's brain dump. Just like any, anything that comes to mind, people just write it. So it's very obvious then who understands and who doesn't, right? Um, so, this one should be pretty straightforward. So we're describing two types of verification, right? So who remembers we have various stages of verification, right? So when, when do we do functional verification? End, beginning, beginning, after what? After coding, right? So we can say that this happens after, is it after or after. after after and during, right? Even while we enter my, even when I'm designing something, so for this module, I might test the counter before I do anything else. In fact, I might test a down counter, an up counter first, make sure it's working, then put the down in, right? So it happens after and during, what was the name we used? Design entry, right? Yeah? Well, if you want to just use the word design, you can do that as well. Okay? <clears throat> so that's when functional verification happens. When does timing verification happen? Anyone remember? After. After what? After. Yeah? 
Yeah, so timing verification after full placement and routing, right? What does placement and routing mean? What do we do in place and route? Yeah, we place, we give all the components a position on the FPGA and determine the routes. So why do we, why can we only do timing verification after we do that? Exactly. We don't know how, if before we do that, we don't know which paths are being used, which signals, how long those, cap those cables, those wires are, right? So we have to do this right at the end after full placement. Okay, functional verification. What are the things we want to do in functional verification? What are we fundamentally trying to answer the question? Yeah. Yes. So, does it fulfill, does the design fulfill its function, right? Does it do what it's supposed to do? Yeah? Does the design do what it's designed to do, right? Does it output the correct values? Does it produce the correct result? Does it give me the right image? Yeah? What are we, what's the main question we're answering in timing verification? Yeah, so we, we have, does, does design meet timing requirements? Yeah? Does the, does the design meet my timing requirements or not? Yeah? So if my circuit needs to run at 100, yes, maybe up to here, I think it does. But once it's put on the FPGA and all the routes are created, does it still meet that requirement or not? Okay? And we haven't gone into the detailed topic of this yet. We're doing it this week. Um, but functional verification, what's the, the key aspect of functional verification is that it's an iterative feedback process, yeah? So we are basically doing our design and our functional verification and constantly iterating between the two, yeah? So if we find an error in our test, then we need to change our design to fix the error, right? So this is some sort of uh, Iterative. Now it's true that all testing is iterative to some set, but specifically functional verification is an iterative process. Yeah? Now with timing verification, what if our design doesn't meet timing? What do we have to do? Any ideas? I didn't go into details in practice. Throw some ideas. We might need to change our design. Yeah? Maybe. We might need the synthesis tools to do some more work. You can set options yeah, to tell it to try harder, yeah. and so on. But this is more of a flat yes or no, right? Yes, it meets, no, it doesn't. Functional is a lot more involved, and it's to do with the computation itself, yeah? Whereas this is all about the delays, okay? But that, this is enough for you to get the marks. And then the other thing, in the exam, briefly explain three marks. You do not write a page. <laughs> People do it all the time, like the whole page. And the, the worst part of writing a whole page is if it's all wrong. <laughs> then it's really disappointing because you feel like the guy wasted all their time, right? It doesn't matter. They yeah. don't know what, until you know, if you don't write any sentences, you just put bullet points and they're correct, you'll get the marks. Yeah, it's not, a, it's not an English text, right? <laughs> but the point is, to if it says briefly, it says four marks, then work it back in your head, right? The exam is 100 marks. Right over two hours, take off twenty minutes for margin and studying and all this stuff. So hundred, so one min, one one uh, one mark per minute. Yeah. You should not spend like twenty five minutes writing an essay to get four marks. Right? <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad. Okay. Uh, so I'll see you guys at the lecture tomorrow.